Hey everyone, it's Marcus. Uh, welcome back to Happy Little Trees, our painting hangout, where we uh, I show you how to paint landscapes in the style of Bob Ross. So uh, we're going to get right into it. So if you've been to one of my programs before, it's pretty much this, the same thing from virtual, but uh, if you're a newcomer, I'll uh, try to make this as straightforward and easy as I can. So first off, let me go over some materials. We definitely want a good sized canvas. You don't want to do this on paper or anything. You want a good strong canvas that will hold your painting. Uh, you're going to want a palette. Uh, it's got like this plexi glass palette that's obviously used a lot, it's really dirty. Um, then you are going to use uh, oil paints. We're not using acrylic. Um, oil paints are a little more expensive, but uh, they're a lot better at blending and they're um, pretty much that's all they're good for is like painting on canvas. You wouldn't want to like, you know, paint a car with this or anything. But uh, yeah, for blending and like landscapes and wet on wet stuff, those are, those are good, those are your go-to. Uh, what else we got? We got brushes. We got a bunch of different kinds. We got uh, the two inch brush. You'll use this to fill in big areas, obviously. Uh, got your one inch brush, kind of the same thing for, for, for like small areas, maybe for clouds, trees, such like that. Uh, you got your palette knife. This is good for kind of like the mountain shapes, really angular, straight, hard edges. Uh, you got your fan brush. This is really good for like pine trees and stuff and clouds. Uh, and a few smaller brushes. Just uh, your square brush, filbert brush, which is just rounded, and then like a smaller brush and a liner brush. And then we also got um, odorless paint thinner or mineral spirits. I just uh, keep mine in a little jar like this because you can keep it and reuse it. But because we're using oil paints, they don't wash off with uh, water, like off of your brushes. So you need this mineral spirits to clean your brushes. Uh, then next, we've got this stuff called liquid white. At least that's what Bob Ross calls it. Uh, basically all it is is just white paint and linseed oil. Uh, oil paints, uh, that's what they use. Um, that's what they're made up of is pigment and linseed oil. So you're basically just adding more linseed oil to make it thinner. And this, because this is a wet on wet technique, this is what you're going to put on first. In fact, I've already got this uh, covered in liquid white just to save time. I, I did on the camera last time, but for a uh, sake of time, I just did it before. But you want to uh, put a very thin layer of this stuff uh, on the canvas. You want to put it as thin as possible. It's like you're putting like a molecule thing of a layer. Because uh, if you put it on too thick, uh, your paint's not going to stick to the canvas. It's going to come off the canvas and stick to your brush instead. So you want it thin, but uh, what this is going to do is it makes the canvas slick and lets us blend right on the canvas and you get some really cool effects. So yeah, when you uh, drag your brush across, it, could, it should just slide all around and be really wet. Well, what else we got? I think that's it. Nope, nope, not quite. Uh, you definitely want a rag because uh, well, it's messy. Uh, you definitely want to wear some old clothes. I pretty much always wear the same, you know, work presentable clothes. It, this has like paint stains all over. <laughs> uh, and then when you clean off your brush, it's good to have, um, Bob Ross would use his easel. He would do that thing where he, he says, uh, just beat the devil out, out of it and just uh, wax his brush to get all the paint thinner off. But, I don't have an easel, obviously. Also, we're in a nice room and I don't want to get paint thinner everywhere. So, this is what I got set up instead. It's uh, just a trash bin. And I think this is like a metal rock from a bookshelf or something. But you pretty much just use whatever and just put it in there and kind of whack your brush in there to dry it off. So, if you see me kind of bend over and hear this thing and all over, that's what I'm doing, just drying my brush off. All right, and that's uh, pretty much it. We're gonna get right into it. So what I'm gonna do today is kind of a big mountain. Big surprise, I like mountains. I don't think I've ever done a painting in this program that didn't have a mountain. Um, and then kind of like a forest in front, 
But then we're going to do something kind of cool. We're going to have a big lake here, and we're going to do like a reflection of the top half. So mountain, trees, and then trees, mountain. So it's all like a reflection. So yeah, let's start out. Let's start it. Let's keep going. Let's go. So I don't want the sky to actually be too blue. Um, we're basically just going to tint it, kind of. And for that, we're going to use phthalo blue. It's kind of like a warm, kind of bright blue. And uh, when you get paint on your brush, don't just dip it in there. You want to kind of drag it out a bit. So don't use up all your paint at once and you don't get too much paint on your brush. So what we're going to do is start at the top and do these crisscross strokes. And the sky should start kind of dark at the top and then get light towards the bottom. That's just kind of how the sky is uh, with the horizon and everything. Uh, to do that, the paint is going to come off our brush. And as we work, work our way down, there'll be less paint on the brush and it'll just get dark to light as we go. So back and forth, crisscross strokes. So. This looks a little rough right now, but we're going to blend it. Alrighty. Oh, geez, paint's everywhere. Oh, geez. <laughs> That's why you need a rag. Sorry, one second. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta be careful because these paints are so oily. Sometimes they just slide everywhere. So they like just slid all the way down. That's all right. Anyways, so uh, once you've got that blue on there, what we're gonna do is um, take a clean brush. So, sorry, I still have paint everywhere. Dang it. There we go. So, what we wanna do is uh, clean our brush because we wanna do this next part with a dry brush. A clean brush. So I'm just going to kind of scrub off all the paint in here. This has like a little metal grate at the bottom, so it's really easy to kind of scrub your brush, clean up all the paint, and just drag it to get as much thing off. And then just get the devil out of it. So now we're going to very lightly kind of come across like this, and that should blend this all together. I said very lightly, but I'm actually having to push pretty hard for this to blend. It kind of just depends. Sometimes you get really heavy brush strokes in areas and you gotta kind of push them out. So you want it to just be kind of blended and even like that. Only about halfway. Halfway down. That's good. So next, we're going to do some water down here. And using the same color, they have a little blue, and a big brush, we are going to come from edges, the outside edges, and come in like this. Start from the edge and kind of lift up in the middle, leave some white right there. Okay. 
same thing with a clean up brush. Same thing, but uh, we want to preserve this white spot in the middle because that's going to make it look really shiny and water like. But very lightly come across. It's actually better to start off with light because you can always blend this more, but you can't really unblend it. So. Just keep going and lightly until it's about where you want it. Again, so I can do it later. All right, so like I said, we we're going to do the big mountain right there. Usually I do clouds in the sky, but I think we go to it's just the mountain, it'll give more focus on that. So, to make a mountain, we are going to do some white. I'm using a powder knife for this. You kind of just use your metal of your uh, powder here to mix. We're going to make kind of a whitish, bluish gray. So, we're mixing some white and black. White's or the black is way more, more strong than the white. So try to use a little bit of black to a lot of white. It almost looks kind of purplish, but it's just a pigment. So then get yourself some blue. I'm gonna use Prussian blue. It's kind of a colder, darker blue. This to be kind of a bluish gray. That's a good color. Maybe a little darker, honestly. Let's get a little bit black in there. There's no one else in here. Okay, so get some of that on the edge of your knife there. And we're going to put in a big mountain right about there. Nice. I'm gonna just come down with that. You don't want to just make a triangle, otherwise it's just gonna look like, a, like an Egyptian pyramid or something. You want to kind of slope downwards and get like these rugged edges. So nature is not perfect. those top edges, if we kind of just fill in the rest here. We don't have to go lightly on this part, we really work the paint and the canvas here.
would say take out all your frustrations. It's hard. got that mountain laid down, we're going to take our one inch brush and don't touch the top edges. Uh, we're just focusing on the inside of the mountain here. So kind of take this paint and kind of pull it down. This will kind of blend in and even it out. And I hope this kind of makes some, like some fog down here at the bottom. See like this kind of blends out into the sky. Don't touch the top, otherwise you're going to blow the mountains. I'm sure in some paintings that would look okay, but I don't this one. So I kind of just blend out the bottom, going back and forth lightly. Try to get out all the brush strokes in here. I also try to spread this thin. I'm going to spread it because if it's too goopy, as I like to say, um, it's going to be hard to put the highlights on top of it. That's good. Okay. Now with the same color, we are going to make a reflection. Now, uh, if you want, you can just take your canvas and flip it over and just try to do the mountain the same way. but. Um, I'm trying to just do it this way. Just gonna leave it. Doesn't have to be perfectly the same. Do the same thing, just kind of fill it in. So, don't even have to fill it in as much as the top. Now, um, I'm going to make another mountain kind of, kind of closer, so it's going to be kind of darker. So that's the way the atmosphere works, is particles in the air, you get all science over here. Um, yeah, particles in the atmosphere actually kind of diffuse the light, and uh, farther away things kind of take on kind of a faded blue tint. So if you really want to sell the depth and like distance scale, you want to kind of get a hang of that. In other words, closer things are better. So I pretty much just using the same color, kind of white and black to make the gray and then adding some blue to it. But a little more black this time. I need a nice more blue. It's 
getting a little too, too gray. Another thing that'll sell a bit is kind of these planes. They'll push things back if you have stuff in front, like in the foreground and mid ground. Like I said, don't be too. Perfect in these mountains. I'm giving some ridges and some bumps. I'm gonna look at this and say, oh, no, no, that bridge right there doesn't match. As long as it looks okay. So next, I'm going to put some highlights, 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 highlights on those mountains. And uh, to do that, we're going to take some white and some blue to it. Put the powder back again. Take some on the edge of your knife and 
I've said in other videos or classes, programs, whatever. Um, this part's a little hard to do, but uh, really cool when you get it to come out right. So you want to take the paint on the edge of your knife, and we're going to kind of highlight one side of the mountain. And when you do this, you want to drag your knife down and only let the weight of the knife hit the canvas. You want to put like no pressure at all. Just kind of break apart as you come down. And that'll make it look like kind of the rugged face of the mountain there. So just trying to imagine like the 3D shape of your mountain. You think where light would fall onto it. Good if you use kind of a thick dry paint for this part because it'll break the part easier. I'm actually using the like, official Bob Ross paints, those are pretty much designed for this. Let's pretty much use the same color in this mountain. That's good. Um, I could add some highlights in the bottom, but it's a little less important. Um, let's just add like some little quick indication of highlights. Because the details are going to be kind of lost by the water. Next, let's uh, add some highlights to the other side of the mountain. And to do that, we're kind of just going to add a little more blue and black. I'm kind of just reusing this over here.
Now see, this is what Bob meant when he said happy accidents. It's, um, it took me a while to understand too, actually, because he doesn't mean making mistakes. He means uh, sometimes you just let things happen in your painting. Like you don't have to go paint this mountain and say, okay, there's a ridge there and a valley there, and the light's falling into there. You kind of just drive your knife and just kind of let little happy accidents happen. It's a, I'm actually pretty new at painting with this. Drawing is one of my forte, like with the pencil and the paper. I actually do like a lot of digital art. I draw like comic books and stuff. And uh, sometimes you have to get like technical and precise for that kind of stuff. So painting actually is a lot different than that. But in a lot of ways, it's kind of more. Freeing medium. That's pretty good. I'll even, um, actually, I'm going to add a little more white to the highlights up here. So I'm just going to get straight, straight up white. That's good. Oh, Pain almost fell off <laughs> again. It's all right. Okay, so next we are going to make some trees. I'm going to have kind of a, a little tree line to kind of separate this sky and the mountain there. I mean, the, the lake. So for that, we are going to use kind of a really dark green. So we're going to use this. It's called sap green, pretty much used for plants and foliage and stuff. I'm going to add a little bit of Prussian blue to kind of darken it a little bit. And some black. Oops, this is a little too much black. I want this to be kind of a bluish dark green. We're using our fan brush for this, by the way. So what we're going to do is put your brush in vertically, and we are going to kind of come down horizontally like this. And start kind of tall around the edges, and then kind of come in. But uh, don't just be kind of like uniform and just go straight down like that. You want it to kind of come up and down in certain areas like that. So otherwise, it'll just look like a green fence. Let's come over here. I'm going to add a little more detail to this. I don't know what it's, but I'm kind of just laying down the base colors right now. So 
you again. You might think, oh no, I'm covering up the mountains. I hope so hard on but as I said in the last stream, kill your darlings. Don't get too attached to anything you can't create because sometimes the pain might be better for it. You can get rid of it or paint over it. The same thing as we did the mountains, kind of just these some quick reflections. So just kind of paint the same tree line but upside down. Highlights on this layer. Make it easier for them to show up. It's a dark color. It's almost like a sound wave, like a waveform. I'm really darkening this up a bit. So now let's take that same color and we're going to have a little more details with the trees and stuff. Like over here, let's make like an actual good looking tree. So kind of come down like this to make kind of like a start of it. And then take your brush and horizontally kind of use the corner and Come back and forth like this. I just kind of come back and forth and switch it. Still no there. I'll just give it a start and then just. teaching one of his classes that somebody called these Z trees. Because you make that shape and then kind of go back and forth like a zigzag. And then you do these little swishes kind of putting your brush kind of downwards so it almost looks like branches that are kind of hanging. You don't have to copy me exactly. If you want like two trees over here, do two trees. If you want a billion trees, do a billion trees. Basically, all you should be learning from this is the technique. And you can kind of make whatever the heck you want. It's 
you know, making these different sizes. Kind of sells that kind of 3D look, like these trees are really close, that one's really far. Um, that's good enough. So let's do the reflections too. Um, so because these are in the water, I'm going to do these a little different. I'm going to kind of come back and forth like that. Like it's kind of like ripples in the water. And then kind of just come back and forth like that. This Make sure you get every tree reflection. Otherwise, they'll be like fucking vampire trees because they have no reflection. You can add some highlights to those in a little bit, but I'm going to put some stuff in the foreground first. So take your one inch brush, which is clean. I think I cleaned it earlier. That same dark bluish and green color. I'm just going to kind of add some some grass or something over here, just to kind of get some stuff in the foreground and really sell the distance scale. Let's get some brown. I think this is fan like brown. It's just got a really dark, earthy brown. And let's kind of imagine where the, the water stops. And let's kind of just drag in some, some dirt on the
spread down the dirt to make it look like it looked like it's wet. Okay, um, next let's get some straight white, kind of get over the edge of your knife, and kind of add some white around the edge of this lake here, kind of like this little bubbles or foam around the edge. And just scrape that on with your knife. to the end here. So let's get our one inch brush. Put it on again. Alright. So we're gonna add some highlights to the trees and for that we want to kind of really bright so I'm going to get some yellow, mostly yellow, and that's a ring to it. Maybe a little bit of white. Make this really bright. It almost looks like wasabi sauce. <laughs> there. So one trick to get paint to stick. Is add a little bit of paint thinner for your mineral spirits. So thinner paint will stick to the thick paint. You just want to get some on the edge of your brush here and just dab it on there. It might be better if we do those trees with a finger brush. So we grab one of those. Just clean it off. Basically just kind of imagine where the light is hitting the trees, and like lighting up the leaves. And just drop in some bright highlights there. I 
as you can see, what I've done, it's a little easy to overdo this, but that's whatever. Those four ones I think I'm going to use. Actually coming out better than what we thought it would. Alright, let's use the same color and let's kind of get this grass over here so that way it's and just tap it. Kind of just near the top. And then kind of come down. And just tap it. Come down by the Last, let's do like some little, like, little twigs or something down here. Just add a little more interest to the foreground. I'm going to use this liner brush. It's a really thin brush. Okay, it's going to work upwards. Add a little more paint than with that because I like to be almost like that's better. Almost like ink consistency. Base, trees, and stuff.
I think that's going to about do it. Let me go ahead and just sign that real quick. do it. Hope you had fun if you painted along and if not, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time. Take care.